Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the 2022 budget virtual session. We'll be getting underway at 530. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us at the 2022 City Virtual Budget Session. We're gonna get started in just a couple of minutes, actually just one minute. So um, if you wanna grab a cup of tea or get comfortable, uh, now is the time to do so. Hi, good evening everyone. Welcome and thank you for taking the time to join the City of Kingston's online engagement session for the 2022 budgets. My name is Julie Lee Stitt and I'm a Corporate Communications Officer at the City and I'm going to be moderating this evening's session. So the session is live streamed to the City of Kingston's YouTube channel and it is being recorded. To protect your privacy and participants, all participants have their video turned off and have been muted and the chat, chat functionality in Zoom is also turned off. So this means that anything you enter into the chat feature will be visible only to myself and the panelists. So technology troubleshooting. There's a few things you can do in the Zoom platform, and one of them is adjust your view options, which can be quite nice, especially when we have a presentation up on the screen and the speaker. So if you are familiar with the platform, I do invite you to experiment with that a little bit. However, it's, if it is your first time, perhaps just leave it as you found it. The other thing is, um, you know, sometimes technology issues will happen and you can visit Get Involved Kingston uh, for some resources and you can access those resources at www.getinvolved.cityofkingston.ca. Google is also a very valuable resource. If you find your internet connection goes down, we have provided a phone number on the screen, which you can call into. And again, as I mentioned, we are live streaming to the City of Kingston's YouTube account. So you can hop on over there at any point. And if for some reason you have to leave this, mini, this evening session early, you can go and find the session on our YouTube channel as well. 
So asking questions, we are going to be taking questions this evening, and you can actually enter your question at any point in writing using the Q&A tool at the bottom of your screen. You'll find it in the bar. Your name and the question will be visible to all participants. One thing I want to mention is that um, it, it's always helpful, especially with uh, other people in the room, if you can keep your question uh, concise so that we can get to as many as possible, but also detailed so that we can ensure that the project team is answering your question adequately. The other option is if anyone is joining us by phone or, you know, you just have uh, a mic that you want to make use of, you can ask a question verbally at the end of tonight's session. And you would just use the raise hand function, which you will also find in the bottom bar of your screen. And I will enable your audio so you can ask it uh, verbally to the team. The other thing I just want to point out before we hop on over to the next slide, because we do have quite a bit, we only have an hour together and we have quite a bit to get through, um, is that we have a survey open on Get Involved Kingston right now, and it's open until August 9th. So if you have not completed that survey, I invite you to do so and to share it with your colleagues, family, friends, your, your entire network. The other thing I want to mention is we're using a new to us tool this evening, um, although it, it is quite popular, and that is menti.com. Uh, so that is the QR code on the screen as well as the access code. And just a little bit, bit of background, uh, Mentimeter is an online tool that allows you to complete a quick survey or check-in, and it just adds a nice engagement piece to a session. However, we don't want it to be a barrier to participation, so if you decide that you don't want to participate that way this evening, do not worry about it. There is a survey on getinvolvedkingston.ca. But if you are going to participate in any of the menti.com uh, polls, then I invite you using your smartphone or opening another browser in your window to visit www.menti.com and you will be prompted to enter a code. And that code is 973692. Nine, eight. And later in the presentation will be some fun polls for you to complete. And if you haven't had a chance to jot down that number yet, don't worry, we will be providing it when we open the poll. The final item I want to cover before I turn the uh, session over to the project team are the guidelines for participation. So these guidelines uh, were actually developed by the City of Kingston in consultation with the community. So my question for attendees is, is there anything additional you would like to have added to the guidelines for this engagement session? So to confirm that everyone agrees, we would ask that if you are not in agreement, please raise your hand using the raise hand function. I'm gonna give you just a, a little bit of time to do that. Okay, thank you. So seeing no objections to the guidelines for participation, we will proceed into this online engagement session. I'm now going to pass the presentation over to Desiree Kennedy. Thanks, Julie Lee. And uh, welcome to everybody. Welcome to our first 2022 city budget uh, virtual session. Um, we're kicking off the first of four sessions on some specific service areas. Uh, for those that are wondering, we've chose these service areas that will be happening throughout the, uh, the month of July um, based on some information that we've received over the last year and particularly the 2021 budget engagement process. Um, we have heard back uh, from a, num <clears throat> excuse me, a number of folks that uh, last year's engagement process, which was our, uh, our first try at things, um, that people uh, felt that there was a lot of information given um, and they wanted more opportunity to have further discussion and input and a little bit less of, of information. So we have uh, developed a plan this year around our 2022 budget engagement process, um, taking some of that into account and trying to, to make a few changes so that folks have a little more opportunity for the discussion and input. So in that regard tonight, um, we're happy to have Lucretia Turner here with us. Lucretia is our Director of Recreation and Leisure Services. 
Uh, and she'll be kicking off the first of our, our four sessions talking about recreation and leisure and some of the, uh, the services uh, um, that the city provides. Uh, next slide, please. So tonight, uh, you're going to hear a few things from Laquisha. Uh, she's going to start with an overview of the department, uh, some of the services and service levels that are provided to the community, talk a little bit about the department's current priorities and initiatives, um, and, uh, and what they're looking at going forward over the next year, and particularly into, uh, into 2022. Um, she will be providing us with some information on how the services are funded, uh, and how they are funded either through property tax taxes and other non-tax revenue sources. And then she's going to talk a little bit about uh, the budget challenges and some of those strategies that she and her team uh, um, use on a regular basis in terms of developing the budgets. And then finally, at the end, uh, we certainly will be looking to, to you for some feedback and input um, around recreation and leisure services. And, and we'll be talking about that and some of the specific things that we'll be, uh, we'll be looking for um, after Lucretia is done. Uh, next slide, please. So I welcome Lucretia here tonight. Uh, and we're going to ask her a few questions so that we can get a better handle on all things recreation and leisure and, and what that means from uh, her perspective and her world. Um, certainly, recreation and leisure manages a broad range of services to the community, as I'm sure everybody knows. Uh, it's a very large department that Lucretia and her team do manage. And so we're going to start off, Lucretia, by asking you, and you, maybe you can tell us what types and levels of services do you provide the community today? So thank you, Desiree and Lana, for the opportunity to be here. And thank you to our participants this evening. Uh, as Desiree mentioned, I'm Lucretia Turner, Director of Recreation and Leisure Services for the City of Kingston. And I'm pleased to have Jacqueline Grimman, who's our Manager of Recreation Programming, joining us as well this evening. Um, so some of the, uh, I guess, next slide, and we'll go through some of the, the services that Recreation and Leisure uh, provide. So we have... Um, in our arena portfolio, we have uh, we have nine arenas in total. The Invista Center, um, which sees uh, approximately a million people uh, pre-COVID go through it. We've got the Cataraqui Community Center, the Kingston Memorial Center, seven, Center 70 Arena, and uh, and the Leon Center. So our um, our arenas are um, home to many different sports in the in the winter time. Some of those of sports include hockey, figure, sa figure skating, synchronized uh, skating, ringette, and speed skating, just to name a few. Um, in the summertime, they're used for many different recreation and leisure activities like ball hockey, pickleball, and the uh, and home shows like the Kinsman Home Show. The Cataraqui Community Center has our only Olympic sized ice pad. Um, the rest of our ice pads are NHL size, which uh, allows it to be the home to the Kingston Strider Speed Skating Club, which provides a, a location for hosting many different provincial types of meets. We also have the Leon Center, which is the city's 5,000 seat arena, uh, home to the Kingston Frontenacs Junior A Club. We have two marinas, Confederation Basin and Portsmouth Olympic Harbor, which are open from May 1st until the, uh, the Thanksgiving weekend in October. Um, uh, docks are provided to seasonal and transient clients. Um, we have community centers, the Rideau Heights Community Center in, in the north end of the city. And we're very excited to be opening the Kingston East Community Center in January of 2022. We also have um, the city owns and operates two fitness centers. One is located at the Invista Center and the other one is at, our, at Artillery Park Aquatic Center. Um, individuals can purchase memberships on a monthly and annual basis. Um, and they're also provided options of other services like personal training. We have two um, uh, aquatic centers. One is an indoor aquatic center. Uh, which is Artillery Park, which has a 25 meter pool and a, a warm water leisure pool. And then we have the outdoor aqua park as well, which is located at the Kingston Memorial Center, which has the um, uh, outdoor pool, lazy river and, and a slide. 
We have uh, registered and drop-in programming, and this includes everything from our fitness classes to our AquaFit programs to day camps and interest uh, courses for the community. Uh, next slide, please. Hi, Lakrisha. I'm just going to <laughs> pop back in here. I don't know if everyone will, will recall at the top how I talked about technology issues. So um, just to put everyone at ease, I had a couple of mine this evening. So it's like a broken glass in a restaurant. I do apologize. We had a question for you. And it was how many people visit the Invista Center on an average year? Um, now, you may guess 1 million, as one individual has already done. Uh, but I invite you to put a response in the Q&A feature just for fun if you want to uh, take a guess and we'll we'll just wait a couple of seconds there perfect oh okay apparently it is working <laughs> so that is always nice to see and I just want to thank everyone for being so gracious and lovely because uh, my IT struggles are real and I just wanted to mention before I pass it back over to Lakrisha, who will provide you with your response uh, that we have uh, just over a dozen people uh, joining us this evening. So back to you, Lucretia. Thank you, Julie Lee, and that's great um, to hear that we have so many participants this evening. Uh, next slide, please. So services that we offer to the community, our, our facility revenues just for arenas and marinas are approximately $3.4 million a year. Um, our programming revenues, so that comes from our fitness memberships that I mentioned, our registered um, classes like fitness classes and AquaFit, and then also our drop-in programs which, which could consist of drop-in pickleball or drop-in basketball in our gymnasiums that, um, that uh, is about $1.3 million a year in, in revenue. Um, with our drop-in and registered programs, we service over 19,000 participants on an annual basis. Next slide, please. Thanks, Lucretia. So I think I can reiterate that definitely is a broad scope of, of services and programs that, that your department provides the community. Um, and just thinking about uh, how you, around those services, you manage com the community priorities and council priorities, and particularly in an ever-changing environment, which we've certainly dealt with uh, the last year and a half, but even thinking about going forward as we reopen up. Um, perhaps you can share with us what some of your department's current priorities and initiatives are. Thanks, Desiree, I'd love to. So um, some of the, the current priorities of, of the Recreation and Leisure Services Department are community gardens. This relates to one of council's strategic priorities, which is food security. There is the implementation of the Parks and Recreation Master Plan, which was just um, actually very exciting. It was, very, it was just passed by council in April of this year. Um, and what that plan does, it was actually an update to the original plan, which was from 2010. So what that plan does is that guides and it determines the investment in recreation facilities, amenities and programs and services over the next 15 years. So what we heard through the, the community engagement and consultation of that plan um, was that people in the community wanted to see more leisure type of activities and less structured um, booked activities. So more investment also in amenities like pickleball and tennis and possibly uh, future aquatic centers in the west end and the east end of the city, which would be in our six to 15 year um, medium long range plan. So six to 15, six to 15 years out. Um, there's also the need for community development and partnerships. So um, more partnerships with some of the um, of our partners that I think are going to be coming up on my my next slide. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the opening of the Kingston East Community Center. Next slide, please. So 
for community gardens, we have approximately uh, 12 municipal community gardens. We have three that are in progress. Very excited to announce the fact that we are developing a new community garden in Shannon Park, which is uh, right next door to the Rito Heights uh, Community Center. Again, there is the implementation of our Parks and Recreation Master Plan. And when we get into community development, uh, that is where we're talking about our, um, our community partnerships, which are um, for services. They're either services that the city already offers or services that might be um, different to what the city offers. Um, and some of our community partners you would find in, in organizations like the Boys and Girls Club, the Kingston Family YMCA, the Seniors Association of Kingston, and Loving Spoonful. The other new and exciting thing that has come out of the update to the Parks and Recreation Master Plan is uh, recreation programming at the neighborhood level. So we will be working with the city, we know there's approximately 30 plus neighborhood associations throughout the city of Kingston. We will, our team will be working closely with those neighborhood uh, associations to see what types of community development they're looking for. So things like outdoor recreation equipment um, and community parks, it might be uh, renting the city's portable screen to show a movie um, in a community park. It could be something um, uh, a little bit more simple and quiet, like a pilot project called the, the Quiet Streets Program, where that would allow um, uh, neighborhoods to um, uh, put in an application to block off their street. And maybe that might be for things like scootering for an afternoon or simply just taking some chalk and drawing out on the street. So a lot of different exciting initiatives coming our way um, that our team will be working on within the next year or two. Uh, next slide, please. Um, there's also the opening of the Kingston East Community Center. So extremely excited about this project. It's, it's long overdue. Um, the center is just off of Highway 15 on Grenadier Drive, right next door to LaSalle Secondary School. Uh, so the, some of the amenities that, that you will see within the, the new facility are a full-size gymnasium, a fitness center, we'll have a commercial kitchen, um, lots of community meeting space, uh, splash pad, and also an outdoor rink as well. Next slide, please. Perfect. So we have our next poll for the, e the evening. And I realized what happened. The code I had on the screen earlier uh, was from last week. And so if you visit menti.com, www.menti.com, and enter code 65098449, then you will be able to complete this quick poll. And again, if you just want to enter your response into the Q&A tool, I'm going to accept that too. So the question that we're asking this evening is what recreation and leisure service are you most likely to use? I see volleyball courts. Very nice. Good place to do some uh, spiking, some setting. I sound like I know something about volleyball. I really don't. <laughs> All right. So again, oh, wow, they're just pouring in now. Beach volleyball courts, always great. Waterfront parks, yes. Community pools trails yes especially uh during the pandemic i think we've all seen trails become very popular pool cycling routes absolutely all right so i'm going to turn it back over to lucretia but thank you everyone for taking the time to complete that poll okay so back over to me <laughs> Just to fool you a bit there, Julie Lee. <laughs> um, so what I think probably a lot of folks are always interested in, and that's the numbers. And what does it cost to provide these services to the community? And how do you fund these services? So, Lucretia, uh, what do your operating and capital budgets look like? That's great. Thank you, Julie Lee, and thanks, uh, Desiree. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, so our operating budget. Um, these are our numbers from 2021. 
Um, so I do, I do want to preface this and say, uh, we all know we're still in the, still in the middle, middle of, uh, or in COVID, I should say, hopefully there's a light here shortly, um, at the end of this tunnel, but our 2021 numbers. So, um, as you can see, total revenue for this, uh, for 2021, approximately $5.2 million Pre-COVID, um, if you looked at our revenue in 2019, approximately $8.75 million. Um, expenditures, uh, uh, also a um, total of over um, $13 million. So at the end of the day, um, at uh, the bottom of the screen, then the net taxation is, is about $8.5 um, million and uh, you can see the net ta net taxation by program broken down into administration programs uh, recreation programs and recreation facilities so um, little more weight on on the recreation facilities but we definitely have we have a lot of them um, in the portfolio uh, next slide please So just taking a look at our capital, and I think that this is extremely important for, for information to have and for people to know. So our capital um, total four year average of our capital expenditures is approximately $2.6 million. So um, what happens with that is um, uh, there's money that comes in through through different ways. So what we do with the, the capital is a couple of things. We, we pay down existing facility debt. So I guess maybe the best example that I could give would be the Invista Center. So, so much money per year goes towards the debt um, that was incurred on building the Invista Center. And then the rest of the money um, filters into our different capital accounts. And, and where you would see uh, capital expenditures are on items like new roofs, um, new mechanical systems in our buildings. So it might be a, a BAS system to control temperatures. It could be on our ice uh, refrigeration plants. Um, so it's important that we keep all of those, those pieces in, or those assets in good working order um, so that we can provide these services uh, to the community. So our community centers, um, they see about $800,000 a year um, rate up to our um, arenas uh, with a million. Um, and then some of our smaller um, capital accounts are for recreation facilities and programs. So um, we keep a little bit of money aside in a capital account every year, and that's to replace things like um, uh, equipment in our fitness centers. So next slide, please. Thanks, Lucretia. So we're going to get a little tricky on you now. I'm going to give you a two-part question. Um, and thinking that this might provide a bit of context to folks um, as they're thinking about some of the, the feedback and the input that they'd like to provide us, um, it might be useful for them to hear what some of your budget challenges are uh, and what some of the strategies are that you're using to address those challenges. It's a great question, Desiree. So I'm always always happy to uh, to to talk uh, and to provide information in this area. So. Um, some of the things that, that uh, we see challenges for are the increased need for services, um, the increased demand for services and service levels, and then also the last 16, 17 months, um, the pandemic uh, recovery. So um, probably one of the um, best examples that I can give that came up most recently, and it came up with um, when we were going through consultation um, and engagement for the Parks and Recreation Master Plan was swimming lessons and, and lane swims. So um, not, enough, not enough times for swimming lessons for certain age groups. People find it difficult to, to juggle, um, especially with multiple children, you know, want times close, you know, either at the same time, different levels of swimming lessons at the same time or close to the same time. Our adult lane swims are extremely popular, so it's making sure that we can we are providing enough of those times 
So those are things that we, we take a look at is the, the need for demand in services and it fluctuates. It's, it's up and down depending on, you know, the different programs, also the different sports. Um, some years, some sports are, are popular and they might be popular for a certain amount of time and then it ebbs and flows. Um, so uh, that's probably one of the best examples I can give. And then of course, there's always the challenge of um, recovering from the pandemic. Um, so I think if we can go to the next slide, please. So some of the strategies that we use to address some of these challenges. So when I, when I just gave the example about the swimming lessons, um, one of the things that we've done is we've partnered with the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Kingston, um, and we've purchased pool time at their West, West End location. Um, and that is to provide service as far as additional swimming lessons for the community, additional adult swims, additional lane swims, additional leisure swims. So that is a great example of a, per, of a good, strong partnership that, that the department and the city has with the organization. Another example that I can give is that throughout the pandemic, um, as everyone was trying to recover and to open up um, different services, we also partnered with the Kingston Family YMCA and they were um, able to provide um, fitness services to our, to our clients that would normally be uh, working uh, out at at Artillery Park because we were not able to open up the Artillery Park Aquatic Center um, for other reasons. So great example of that. Um, uh, one of the things that we also do is um, through community engagement. So our larger projects, whether that is um, our colleagues and our parks development unit. I, I see somebody put up about uh, using the waterfront and waterfront master plan and our colleagues in parks development are working on that. Um, so whether it's community engagement on that or it was community engagement on the Kingston East Community Center or whatever it might be, we're out there working with the community on these different initiatives because it's important to us that we get your feedback um, and that we're listening to, to you and that we're able to provide that, that feedback, whether that's through a master plan or through council reports, um, so that council gets the full picture or the whole picture when decisions are being made. Um, as far as other sources of funding, we are always looking um, to both the provincial and federal government for different grant streams. And again, working with our different community partners on, on different uh, initiatives to see um, basically who can bring what to the, to the table in order to provide more services to the community. And I can assure you every year uh, we work with Desiree and Lana um, and their financial services team. We're always looking for operational efficiencies um, we've worked extremely hard in the last uh, three or four years with um, our colleagues in facilities management and construction services, um, really to find uh, operational efficiencies through our buildings. So whether those were um, retrofits um, through different safety audits and um, how could we save money on things like hydro, gas and water just to name a few, or just to provide a few examples. Next slide, please. And I guess we're to the questions now. That's great. That's right. Thank you, Lucretia. So I'm just popping back on here to let you know that we are going to be taking your questions this evening. And there's a couple of ways that you can pose them. So right off the hop, I had mentioned that there's the Q&A tool at the bottom. And I see we already have a few in the queue, which we're going to be getting to. The other option is if you wanted to ask your question verbally, uh, you could just indicate uh, you would like to do so by raising your hand and I can enable your audio. And I did check, I didn't see anyone was joining us uh, by phone, but if for some reason you get kicked off and you do uh, rejoin by phone, then you would simply press star six and that would trigger the raise hand function and we would enable your audio so you could ask your question. So before we get to the questions in the queue, I gave a little bit of a sneak peek to the, the future slides that were coming up. So I'm just gonna hop ahead to the the next one, um, just to give an idea around some of the areas that 
you might have questions about. I'm going to turn it over to you, Desiree, on this one. Thanks, Julie Lee. So I thought uh, we'd just provide this slide as a bit of a, a context for folks um, and not to preclude some of the questions that have already been asked or other things that uh, feedback that you'd like to provide tonight. But um, from our perspective, just looking at some of the things that we'd really be interested in hearing, whether tonight uh, or whether it's through our, our survey um, or through the Get Involved Kingston page, um, we certainly uh, welcome any kind of, of feedback. So just to give a little bit of a context, um, breaking it down into a couple of areas, certainly the effectiveness of the services and the service levels that we provide for this area today. So things to think about, is the department providing the right services at the right level? Um, are we meeting the objectives or the desires, the needs of the community with those services that we're providing? Um, and are we doing it at the right service level? So are there things that we're doing that we really don't need to do? Or are there things that we're missing? Are there service levels that you think we should be increasing or decreasing? And then around the efficiency of services. So this is more about the value for the dollars and how the department provides these services. So there are ways, are there ways that you think that the department could provide these services more efficiently? Um, and that really comes down to a, a continuous improvement culture that we have here at the city. And Lucretia touched on this in terms of some of the, uh, the budget strategies and, and how they ensure um, that their budgets are efficient with, re with respect to the, the services they're providing. So just give you a little bit of a context of some of the things and certainly open for, for feedback, feedback on these or any other areas. Perfect. Thank you, Desiree. So now we do have some questions in the queue, as I mentioned, which is excellent. I just want to remind everyone that if you do have a question, you can enter it using the Q&A tool at the bottom of the screen. And we're going to be doing our best to get to all of the questions this evening. So the way that it's going to work, I'm actually going to be reading out the questions. So we're going to start with uh, Vicky's question at the top. And Vicky writes, 19,000 participants. Is that distinct individuals or uses? And the same individuals going more than once. If the latter, do you have a number for distinct individuals who use city recreation facilities? That is, I think, a question for Lucretia. Um, it is, it's very specific information that you're looking for. So I'm going to invite Lucretia on and see if she has it on hand or if it might be something she might be able to get to you later. Thanks, Julie Lee, and it is. It's a great question. Thank you, Vicki, for that. Um, I'm going to start, and then I'll ask Jacqueline if, if there's anything she wants to add to jump in here. I believe it's total number of registrants, um, and I also believe that our system can break it down by postal code. So if we wanted to break it down by district to see who's registering from, from what area, I believe that we can do that, and we would be happy to provide that additional um, information through through whatever means, whether it's a get involved platform or whatever it might be. Perfect. Thank you, Lucretia. Our next question comes from Carrie Hill and Carrie asks, is there a plan for canoe and other person powered boat put ins in the east? Again, that is a specific question. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lucretia and see if she's able to answer it this evening or if it's one we might have to get to follow up on. It's another great question. Thank you for that. Um, so what I will say is that Jacqueline and our um, team are working with a lot of different um, organizations who want to bring different uh, um, either water sports or, or different types of um, activities that are water-based uh, to the community. Um, all along our waterfront, we, we have a lot of it. Um, it is something that we did see through the Parks and Recreation Master Plan as well. It did come up. Um, so we, we recognize that as a team and we are working diligently at providing as many different services and programming as what we possibly can. So I believe canoeing was one of them. Um, I just don't know tonight specifically where, but um, if Jacqueline has any additional information, um, I would, you know, she can definitely add to it. Um, but uh, we, can, we can definitely get back to you on that as well.
Thanks, Lucretia. And uh, yes, appreciate uh, appreciate the comment, Carrie. Um, as part of the, the Parks and Recreation uh, Master Plan update, um, there was uh, a recommendation within the plan uh, that talks about considering the prioritization um, a development of a small craft launch um, at uh, Lobro Lake, uh, West Basin, and uh, the Colonel By Lake. So um, that is part of the plan. It, uh, in terms of timing, was um, in the, the one to five year and, and the six to 10 year uh, plan. So it is part of that, uh, that plan. So hopefully that, that answers your question. Perfect, thank you, Jacqueline. And thank you, Carrie, for the question. Uh, we're very fortunate. We have so many experts in the room this evening, you know, in the physical room and then joining us virtually. And Jacqueline's a manager with the city's recreation and leisure department and um, her input is, is very valued too. I'm going to get to a question now from Isla and Isla's asking about community gardens. And she says, community gardens were listed at the top of your list of priorities, yet the city currently only allocates about $5,000 per year for grants to new and existing community gardens. How will this change in the 2022 budget? I'm going to turn that oh, oh, to Lucretia. Okay. Sure, I'm going to start. Thank you. And, and thank you, Ella. That's an excellent question and, and happy, uh, um, uh, happy that you're able to participate tonight along with everyone else. And this is excellent. So what I can tell you is this. Uh, Jacqueline and I will be coming to council shortly with a um, with an information report that will focus on community gardens. We recognize the fact that there's a need for additional funding for community gardens, um, and we will be outlining some some next steps where that is concerned. Um, and it will it will talk about um, what the department is proposing for the 2022 budget. So I definitely appreciate the question um, and uh, we will reach out, uh, reach out shortly to let you know when that, if that report is coming in July or August. Excellent, thank you, Lucretia and thank you, Isla. The one thing I'm going to mention, I see a, a couple of individuals are asking follow-up questions or new questions, and that's great. I'm just going to prioritize questions from individuals who haven't had their uh, first question answered first. And we have one actually from Brenda Willis, and it's in the chat tool. And Brenda is asking, because of COVID, we lost access to school gyms, court rentals at the Y, Queens, and St. Lawrence are $75 plus per court, which puts fees out of range for many families. Will the city do anything to either offset these costs for youth sports clubs or offer subsidies to families in need? So that's a great question coming from Brenda, which I'm going to turn over to Lucretia for a response. Yes, it's an excellent question. And thank you for that, Brenda. Um, so what uh, happened recently was one of the things, the, there was a report to council a few months ago, um, and it was some relief funding for for different organizations throughout the city. So there was some that, that was directed to small businesses. There was some that was directed to arts and culture. There was also some that was directed approximately $100,000 was directed to recreation. Um, and there was um, some directed to housing and social services as well. So through that, um, there was criteria that was made up. Um, there was communication that was sent out and our recreation organizations could apply um, for, for the grant funding. So that, that's first and foremost, and it was related to the pandemic specifically. I wanna be very clear about that. So it was pandemic, COVID related specific funding. That's number one. Number two, what we have done um, through our rates and fees. So every year when we go through the budget process, we, we take our operating and our capital budget to council. Um, it gets approved. And then what normally happens is shortly after that, we go back with a rates and fees report. And that is every, every rate and fee that the city charges throughout the corporation. I'll say that I might, Des and Lana might correct me on that, but that's, that's how I, <laughs> I know it to be anyways. So definitely everything within recreational leisure services is in that, is in that uh, document. 
So what we've done the last couple of years is we recognize the fact that um, different sporting areas are struggling, different sectors of our community are struggling. So we've, we, what has normally seen some of our um, sports, so I'll give you an example, our ice rentals, which would normally see a 3% increase on an annual basis, we've held the line in 2020 and in 2021, recognizing the fact that, that there's their struggles. Um, we've held the line um, for the next uh, year or two on sports field fees. There, We did raise it uh, 2% this year, but we will be um, making a recommendation to council coming here shortly through another report that we're going to take, um, where we're going to recommend that we hold the line on, on some other fees in order to give um, groups an opportunity to, to um, uh, recover from the pandemic. The other piece to this, the third piece, is that the city has approximately $120,000 in a fund, which we call SPARC, um, that resides within the Recreation and Leisure Services budget. And what that allows is it allows for families who qualify through our Housing and Social Services um, Department. It allows them to come and sit down with a member of our team um, and we are able to subsidize everything from day camps to our uh, learn to skate program, to our um, swimming lessons, to our fitness memberships. So there's that avenue as well. And then the fourth piece that I, I would mention is the fact that we also continue to work with our community partners. So whether that is the Boys and Girls Club or it's a Kingston Family YMCA, or it's the Seniors Association, we're working with all of those partners to make sure that we are providing services um, uh, throughout the community in different locations so that people are able to access um, different things depending on, on their income and what they're able to afford. So I hope that that answers your question. Thank you, Lucretia. That was a very detailed response. And actually, I'm going to ask, I see Vicki has a question connected to user fees. And Vicki, if you just want to pop in the chat or the Q&A to let me know if uh, the response that Lucretia just provided got at what you're asking a little bit too, that, that would be great. And I see here, uh, we have a question from Carrie, and it's focused, actually, there's a couple, and they're focused around community gardens. So Carrie's asking specifically if there's a plan to develop community gardens in the countryside district exam eg uh, glen burnie and then the other question that carrie has uh, connected to that is how many gardeners are on the waiting list for a garden plot um, so i'm wondering if we have that information available this evening lacretia or if it's something that we might have to get back to carry on so great questions um, i see jacqueline's popping in here so i might get jacqueline to maybe uh take the, the second question as far as the waiting list and i don't know if she wants to speak to the uh to the possibility of gardens in the rural area but if not i'm happy to provide some information for that as well great questions great thanks lucretia um yes uh appreciate the questions carrie and and certainly the interest in in community gardening um uh, continuing to work with uh with loving spoonful and with with ayla who's uh, who's in the call tonight here and and certainly appreciate her her attendance uh and the work um that uh that she does as, as well as the organization um loving spoonful in uh, in supporting community gardens in the city um, in terms of the number of gardeners that are on uh, wait lists for a garden plot, we are currently working with, uh, with Loving Spoonful on that number. Um, I know there was um, uh, some numbers provided that, um, you know, have been over the course of a number of years. So we are really trying to just hone in on um, uh, a more accurate number that's, that's current. Um, and we will be um, providing that in the um, information report that's going to be coming forward to council in the next month. So, um, so stay tuned for that. And, and that's certainly something we can follow up with you on. Um, like I said, we are just trying to get uh, a more accurate list of, of uh, the current list of who's on waiting lists for garden plots within the city. Um, 
uh, the the other um, question. Oh, I'm sorry, you just removed it. Too <laughs> That's I right, that. I did. the uh, The other question had to do with uh, gardeners on wait lists. How side. many? That's oh, right. and the um, in in the countryside. So that's right. Yes. Um, so in terms of uh, interest for for new gardens, um, you know, I know we're always happy to to receive new applications if there's an area uh, of interest. Um, if, uh, you know, if there's someone in the community that wants to come forward and, and is interested in a garden in a, a specific area, um, then, uh, you know, by all means, happy to um, to work with uh, with any individuals and, and certainly um, you know, would uh, would direct them to uh, to start that conversation with uh, with Loving Spoonful and the the Kingston Community Garden Network um, to to facilitate um, you know an application for for a new garden. Um, alternatively, uh, again, Loving Spoonful has been a great resource in in connecting um, uh, individuals with gardens within the city and what opportunities might be available to participate in existing gardens um, if uh, if not uh, if you're not looking for a, a new garden um, and uh, some of those might be on on municipal property or, or there are opportunities on private property as well so um, happy to to make that connection if uh, if we can That's great. Thank you, Jacqueline. I'm sorry, I get a little eager on the filing system on the back end sometimes, so I do apologize for making things a little more complicated. Um, so I see Vicki has followed up, and so it seems that uh, the response provided earlier seemed to, to be a little more lean towards clubs and not individuals. So I'm going to read out Vicki's original question, and it was regarding user fees, and how have you changed over the last five years? What is the city's policy on user fees. As a taxpayer, I would like to see the city focus on providing as much access as possible for as many people as possible. The city facility should be for the benefit of all, regardless of income level. And so uh, in her, when she expanded on, on that initial question, Vicki added, I am asking about the cost of swimming at Artillery Park or going to a fitness class. And then there is a very nice comment that we're doing a great job. So thank you, Vicki. And so I'm going to turn it over to Lucretia to see if she can expand on the uh, the individuals piece of it. Sure. Yeah, no, it's a great, great follow up question as well. So I'll start and then Jacqueline can add anything if she'd like to. But as far as fitness classes and, and swimming go specifically, um, those are those are things that we we work with the YMCA and and other providers within the community, some of our other partners to make sure that um, we, we are taking a look, right, at, at our rates to make sure we, you're 120% you're correct. They're, they're city facilities. We want to make sure that everyone in the, um, in the community who wants to use them is able to do so. Um, so we take a look at not only our own rates, um, but other, other community partners' rates, just to make sure that we're, we're definitely not that not over that. We also provide, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we provide spark funding. We have seen people um, use that as far as our fitness and classes go, our fitness memberships and also our swimming lessons as well. Um, I can also maybe just add too that we, part of our partnerships with organizations like the, the Kingston Family YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club is to make sure that for different services, whether they're in their buildings or they're in a city of Kingston facility, that we're offering as many spots as all three organizations can that are, are subsidized to some point, right? So City of Kingston facilities, you're always going to see a subsidization. Um, it's going to be to different amounts. Um, there's also the SPARC subsidization on top of it. And then different partner organizations uh, fund different services different ways. So if I can maybe just give you, Vicki, another example. And this has come at the Rideau Heights Community Center in the last couple of years where um, our, the Boys and Girls Club were able to provide a lot of subsidized spots. The city is able to provide um, free access to the facility through com community partnerships. Then the Boys and Girls Club is able to provide subsidized spots. The YMCA is able to provide subsidization on their programs too. Both groups are doing an excellent job. 
The Seniors Association is providing subsidized services out there. Loving Spoonful is in there. They're doing an excellent job too. So um, um, areas of our community that, that we recognize, um, every area needs subsidization just to some point, but areas that maybe require a little bit more subsidization, um, we make sure that we're that our team is in tune with that and that we are working with those community partners to, partners to provide those services. So whether that's the Boys and Girls Club with their after school programming, it's the Kingston Family YMCA with their Play Hard, Eat Well program. Um, uh, all excellent services to the community, all um, new services to the Rideau Heights Community Center within the last, you know, three, four, five years. Um, the YMCA just came on board out there at the Rideau Heights Community Center. So excellent. We are going to carry those services, I can assure you, through to the Kingston East Community Center to some sort of level. And I think it's important that we mention tonight that when we're building these new recreation centers, that we really want them to be community hubs. And the difference in a community hub to when we built the Invista Center 13, 14 years ago is the fact that not only do we want the partners in that we've already mentioned, but we also want other partners in those facilities. And that might be the United Way. It could be big brothers and big sisters in the community, but a real true community hub to bring as many services into one building to be able to provide maximum effect to as many people in the community as what we possibly can. So I hope that maybe that information assists with, with the question. And I'm not sure if Jacqueline has, has anything else she'd like to add. Yeah, thanks, Lakisha. Uh, yeah, I think you did a, a good job, certainly, uh, you know, covering all the different angles there. Um, you know, certainly we're, we're very conscious, uh, you know, when we bring programming and put together programming schedules for our, our different facilities and, and spaces around the city. Um, the, the pandemic has, has certainly shifted um, the way that we've provided recreation services and we continue to, um, you know, to, to be fluid and in, in adapting to, uh, to the new way in which people want to, to access services in our facilities, um, you know, looking like kind of more uh, drop-in style versus uh, registered programs, which, uh, which Lucretia mentioned. And, um, and, and definitely being conscious of the fact that, um, you, you know, we want to make sure that um, uh, there aren't financial barriers to participating in programs uh, around the city and um, working on, uh, you know, a lot of new initiatives, um, uh, in different areas of the city, so not necessarily focused specifically in our recreation centers. Um, uh, looking at parks around the city, we're, we're currently, you know, operating some uh, some outdoor fitness classes. Um, we're going to be doing some in, in Springer Market Square, and um, and again, you know, a, a mix of of low and, and no cost in in a lot of those cases um, to to make sure that that access is available for uh, for the broader community. Yes, that's great. That was excellent. And the only other thing I would add is when I spoke to the outdoor fitness equipment earlier, that is going to go into some of our parks. We want to make sure that we put the right equipment in um, and that we, we definitely will have to start this on a pilot project, maybe a couple of parks at a time, but we'll keep building on that through the budget process uh, yearly. And it, it would be another example of how we will be able, the city will be able to provide um, access to, to people who um, we definitely, like Jacqueline said, want to make sure that we're breaking down as many financial barriers as possible. That is great. Vicki, thank you for that question. And Lucretia and Jacqueline, thank you for your response. I'm just conscious of the time. We only had an hour here uh, this evening together. So I, I just, before we move on to the next slide, I just want to remind everybody of the slide currently on the screen, and that is around the effectiveness of uh, services and service levels and the efficiency question. And so many excellent questions came up this evening that were outside of that, and, and they were all excellent. But if you have seen that slide and you think about it a little further, I invite you to take your input and uh, 
provide it to us at Get Involved Kingston. So you can visit www.getinvolved.cityofkingston.ca, which is our public engagement platform. And you can provide some answers to some of those questions. And we also have a City of Kingston uh, budget email where if you wanted to email the project team with your response to those questions, that would also be uh, welcome. And you can send that email to budget at cityofkingston.ca. We kept it pretty straightforward. So I see there is one more question in the queue. Okay, so we're gonna, this will be our final question for the evening because we really will have to move on and it comes from Carrie and it is about uh, community gardens. And uh, Carrie asked, should community gardens and food security be under a separate umbrella? That's a great question. I don't know if, if Lakrisha, if that's one you can take this evening or maybe if it should be going, you know, a, a question for other departments to consult on as well. I'll. I'll leave it to you. So I'm happy to uh, happy to answer. So um, uh, community gardens and and markets are within the the recreation and leisure services umbrella. I can assure you, Carrie, that uh, we we take it all very seriously. We are working extremely hard um, to to make sure that council's priority that we achieve it. Um, we achieve that goal or that priority for the community. One of the things that has happened this within 2021 is that uh, through leadership of our of the CAO's office and Lanny Hurdle, we did a update to the, the market bylaw. Um, it was long overdue. It was much needed, um, but it definitely tied into being able to provide um, new components in the bylaw. So being able to provide more fresh produce to the markets, trying to bring those markets under some sort of one umbrella or maybe some sort of, um, you know, some sort of same governance model. Um, but the community gardens are, are definitely tied into that. They are a very important priority to this department and to the, to the organization. Um, and I think when our report comes to council, um, either uh, I would say within the next month, um, the staff report that, that you will see the recommendations that uh, staff is making for committee and council to, to take a look at, you will see how seriously we are taking this. So there, there's a lot of good things that are in that report, I can assure you. Um, and as Jacqueline mentioned earlier, we will continue to work with the community garden network, um, our, our colleagues at Loving Spoonful, um, the different uh, market boards and executives, but we, we will achieve a lot of these goals. So I, I appreciate all of the questions this evening and the questions on definitely on the community gardens for sure. Perfect. Thank you, Lakrisha, for taking that final question from Carrie. And Carrie, thank you. Thank you for asking it and to everyone for coming so engaged, especially on a Monday evening over supper time. It's much appreciated. So I'm going to hand things back over to Desiree at this point in time. Thanks, Julie Lee. And thanks, Lakrisha, for, uh, for the information tonight that you've provided and for managing all those questions that, uh, that we've been firing at you. And, uh, and thanks to everybody as well for, as, as Julie Lee said, for, for being here and, uh, and for being engaged and for asking some great questions and getting some, some great feedback. Certainly appreciate it. Um, in terms of next steps, uh, lots more opportunity coming to provide feedback and input and ask questions. Uh, we have three more virtual sessions happening the next three Monday nights. Um, stay tuned next week. Uh, we will have uh, uh, Katrina here from the uh, Cataraqua Region Conservation Authority um, to tell us all about some of their services and what they provide to the community. Um, the following week we'll have the, uh, the chief here uh, for Kingston Police and then finally the last Monday night in July we'll have the Director of Housing and Social Services with us. So um, lots of in interesting info to come and lots of opportunity for input. Um, we are hoping at this point 
point, as as long as things uh, stay the same in terms of, of restrictions and as things open up, we, uh, um, we're we also hoping to have an opportunity if you'd like to meet us in person and, and have some, some informal conversation. Um, our Deputy Treasurer, Lana Folds, and myself will be at Market Square, scheduled for July the 24th on the Saturday, as well as Thursday, August the 5th. Um, we'll have proper social distancing uh, in place and uh, look forward to, to meeting everybody there. So come on out and uh, we certainly love to uh, to have a chat. Um, as Julie Lee mentioned, we do have our survey is open now at the Get Involved uh, City of Kingston page. Um, and that survey is open till August the 9th. So please tell all your friends and family and uh, and have them participate and, and fill out the survey for us. Um, go to the Get Involved City of Kingston CA page. Uh, lots of information there. Lots of ways to uh, to communicate with us. Um, the the budget email as Julie Lee referenced. Um, and something new this year that we've done, um, you will see an ideas tab where you can provide a project or an idea that you think might positively impact our community. So, you know, we're really looking for those good ideas that are out there. Um, and that's certainly an opportunity to, uh, if you've got something in the back of your mind that you think would just be a great idea, that's a place to come and, and provide it to us. Um, we will be reporting back on all of this, this input and, and the engagement process as a whole back to the community and to council in September. Um, there will be a separate report coming back uh, that will be posted as well on our Get Involved Kingston page and it will provide and summarize some of the, the input and the feedback that we've received. Um, the other question that we get quite a bit is, is how does this make a difference in terms of the budget? So um, we are just starting into our 2022 budget process here at the City of Kingston and departments will soon be uh, getting underway um, to update their projections that they had last year for 2022 and to uh, to develop what those budgets are going to look like, uh, uh, which will be presented to Council later this year. So we are doing some of this concurrently. Um, as we receive this information, we will be providing it to the departments. Uh, so it will actually be informing their process as they develop the, uh, develop the budget. So certainly, uh, Lucretia has gotten lots of information tonight that I'm sure she'll be taking back to her team as she starts to develop their their budgets um, and as we get other general information Lan and I will also be providing that back to the department so um, uh, just to confirm and so you do know that the input that you get the questions that you're asking are will be informing the 2022 budget so uh, um, certainly appreciate that and and the information and the feedback uh, that that we're receiving so I think with that Julie Lee I'll uh, hand it back to you thank you so this next slide, I know everyone has already given so generously of their time and, and the entire project team is grateful for it. But before you go, before you go and you know check that item on the stove, we're hoping that you will take the time to complete a poll for us. And I'm going to launch it right now. It should pop up right on your screen. And this is a public engagement poll. And I guess over a year ago, we started hosting these public engagements online and you know it's a continuous learning process so if you can take the time to complete the poll that's currently on your screen you're going to be helping us get better so please do so we are looking for 100 percent participation so if you have like the fork midway just just put it down and uh, take a couple of minutes to complete the poll on the screen and just while I'm waiting for people to complete the poll. I want to mention, so Desiree gave a really excellent overview of the Get Involved Kingston page and all of the ways that you can provide your feedback on this project. And there is one little item that I wanted to highlight, um, probably can credit to my former career as a reporter, but there's a news tab. So if you go to the page, also click on that news tab because there's actually an article there that shares how input that was received through last year's engagement informed this current process. And I think it's it's really interesting. It just speaks to how, how valuable your input is. So we're just waiting on a couple more people to complete the poll. Again, it should be on your screen. And this input is going to help us improve our process.
Okay, we're just waiting on one individual to complete the poll. And again, I just want to sincerely thank everyone who joined us this evening and had such great questions to ask of the project team. And again, you know, if you have some more ideas, don't hesitate to use uh, that email that was provided, budget at cityofkingston.ca, or again, visit www.getinvolved.cityofkingston.ca. Okay, so I'm seeing some feedback that uh, we have a poll that won't submit. So what I'll do is I'll connect with this individual via email and we'll figure that input loop out. So I am going to proceed with ending the poll and I will be in touch with the person who is indicated is not working for them. Again, thank you everyone for joining us this evening and enjoy the rest of your week. Take care.